Hello, I'm Sun Tae Hong from the Hamon Church in Chincheon. Before I believed in Jesus, I was a Buddhist. But when I was 30 years old, I met the true Lord of my life, Jesus. Because this grace was so amazing to me, I became someone who shares the gospel of his resurrection every day, and I want to share my testimony with you. When I was in high school, I joined a school club called the Buddhist Student Council, and I started to go to a Buddhist temple. The temple I went to was a famous Buddhist temple in Korea, and it was located right in front of my school. After school, I would hang out at the temple a lot, not because I had great faith, but because it gave me the chance to meet beautiful <laughs> girls like my wife. <laughs> As I began to participate in the Buddhist Student Council, I became deeply involved in Buddhist culture. When I was in 10th grade, I memorized all the Heart Sutra, which had 260 Chinese characters. But I didn't want to sound boring. So I listened to a tape of Buddhist monks chanting it, and I practiced till I made sure I sounded just like them. Let me show you what I sounded like. Mahabanya paramilta shingyong kwanjaje pusar I made sure I chanted it just like the monks. Every year, there was a New Year's Eve festival at the temple, and there was a contest in the festival to see who recited the Heart Sutra the best. After all that practice, <laughs> I would win the New Year's Eve contest. On Saturdays, there was a Buddhist worship for high school students. I would bow 108 times while shouting, The Goddess of Mercy! I also did Zen meditation, which involved looking at the bridge of my nose while going into a state of being free from all thoughts. Of course, I had a hard time with it. I also listened to monks preach about Buddha's words, but at the time, Buddha's teachings were too hard for me. There were many times when I couldn't understand. When I was a senior, I thought deeply about Kutama Buddha. I knew that he became enlightened under a linden tree and that he passed away into nirvana at the age of 80. That's why when people greet each other in the temple, they put their hands together and say, May you attain Buddhahood. They teach that everyone can become a Buddha. So I thought, do I also need to practice a life of self-denial like the monks in order to become a Buddha? A year after I came back from the military service, I married my wife, who was one year older than me. She had also been a member of the Buddha Student Council. There was a chief monk whom I really respected during high school, so I had him preside over my wedding. After the wedding, I kept going to the temple where my mother went. At the beginning of January, or after Buddha's birthday in April, I would visit the monk to ask him about my future. Later, when I was going to church, I thought pastors were supposed to tell you about your future too. So one time, I called my pastor and said, Pastor, I got this job offer. What should I do? And my pastor said, Oh, just do whatever makes you happy. <laughs> when I hung up the phone, I was so confused. <laughs> so I laid in bed for 23 hours straight, trying to make a decision. <laughs> After I got married, my marriage life wasn't as smooth as I thought it would be. Also, I switched jobs every year or two because my heart always felt empty. That didn't mean I wasn't enjoying worldly things. But I really hated living the same routine life every day. So I tried to pray in the temple or do Zen meditation, but it didn't work out well. My mother-in-law was a pretty famous fortune teller in my hometown. And when she saw me like this, she told me that I should work on being more devout. So we follow what my mother-in-law told us to do. My wife made ritual food, and I took the food and went under a bridge by myself after midnight. Then I offered a sacrifice to the spirits, wrapped the food, and let it drift away down the stream. Also, I had to go downtown after midnight by myself, perform ancestral rites, hop on one leg 50 to 100 times and say, Leave, you evil spirits! <laughs> and spit <laughs> three times, just like my mother-in-law told me to do. I also lit a candle shaped like a lotus 
and let it drift downstream. However, these countless deeds couldn't comfort or change my heart. I quit my successful job and decided to go to graduate school. But I faced a lot of difficulties because my area of graduate studies was different from my undergraduate major. Also, I couldn't be a full-time student due to my family's circumstances. So at the time, I really wanted to rely on someone. Back then, my wife was having a really hard time because of me. But one day, she began to smile, and she wouldn't stop smiling. I didn't understand why. Later, I found out that my wife had been going to church. One day, I came home from work earlier than usual, and I found the house full of people. They were having worship service. I was extremely surprised. My wife was surprised, too, and all the people there were surprised as well. So after the worship service ended, I told my wife to never, ever go to church. My wife knew that I was having a very hard time, and she gave me a piece of paper with a Bible verse on it that said, Do not be anxious about anything. But something unusual happened. I was reading the verse, and my heart became so peaceful, even though I didn't believe in Jesus. When the new semester began, my wife asked me to go to the Hammam Church in Chinchun with her. It was my first time going to church, and seeing people clapping, praising, and praying out loud was so new to me. I felt like I was in a reality TV show. <laughs> but as I was coming home, I thought I should try going to the church again. That was because of the content of the pastor's sermon. At the time, the pastor was preaching about the book of Malachi, and he talked about tithing. I felt resistant to that, because I thought, of course, he had to talk about money. But when I carefully listened to his words, he was saying, we are not giving God a tenth of what belongs to us. Everything belongs to God, but he has given us nine-tenths of what belongs to him. That made me think that there was something different about this church. Even though I didn't believe Jesus, I thought that if I believed in Jesus, tithing would be the right thing to do. So I kept attending this church. About after four weeks, the pastor told us to love our enemies and that we could never love our enemies by our own strength. I felt like I was struck on the head. I confessed aloud, God, you are right. There is nothing I can do with my own strength in this world. And then tears began to stream down my face like a waterfall. I couldn't stop crying even when the service was over. I wept as I leaned against the church building with my hands braced against the wall. Then I saw the life I had lived before my eyes. I saw all the times when I had tried to accomplish something on my own. There was truly nothing I could do with my own strength in this world. After that, I couldn't stop sharing about the God who gave me peace and passion. I wept as I testified about God to every person I met. But there was a problem. I would weep and share my testimony, but people who were hearing it were not moved. The thing that gave me the hardest time was that I felt agonized when I wasn't moved to tears. I worried about this a lot. After that, I could understand why the leader of my small church had been emphasizing the resurrection. It was not my feelings or emotions that could make me believe in Jesus as my Lord. I clearly realized it was only possible to believe in Jesus through the resurrection, a proof that God gave to everyone. Amen. When I came to church, words like, I met Jesus, really confused me. I thought, did they really meet Jesus? But through 1 Corinthians 15.11, whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. I realized that the people of the Corinthian church didn't believe in Jesus through meeting him, but through testimonies of the witnesses of his resurrection. Amen. Then after that, through Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, I began to search for prophecies in the Old Testament and the things that were accomplished in the New Testament. When I read about Jesus coming to Jerusalem on a donkey in John 12, 
I thought, wow, even small details like these were prophesied about and accomplished. I realized that the cross and the resurrection of Jesus were not random, sudden events. I started to search for these Bible verses one at a time. I especially focused on Peter and Paul. I saw that Peter, a strong fisherman, had cursed and denied Jesus in front of a weak female servant. But in Acts 2, he had testified to the risen Jesus in front of 3,000 people in the Jerusalem square. Also, Paul, who was bloodthirsty to persecute those who were sharing the risen Jesus, was sharing the risen Jesus himself in Acts 9. That was when I came to be assured that Peter and Paul really met Jesus, who died on the cross according to the Bible, and rose again according to the Bible. Because otherwise, their lives couldn't have changed in that way. After I confirmed the resurrection in this way, I was able to confirm that Jesus is God. And just as the disciples had done, I was able to confess John 2.22, which says that they were able to believe in the scriptures and all that Jesus had said only after he died and rose again. At the time, the message that was proclaimed in our church was John 16.9, that there was no salvation if you don't believe in Jesus as Lord. This concerned me a lot. Then one Sunday, the Holy Spirit showed me that Jesus was Lord before the creation of the world. But he did not consider himself equal with God in heaven and came to the world as a man like me, and he died on the cross for my sins and rose again to be my Lord. That was when I finally exactly realized that I'd been wandering in life all this time because I hadn't believed in Jesus as my Lord. So I repented the sin of having lived as my own Lord before God and received Jesus as my Lord. I was deeply moved by the love of God who died for me. When I heard that Jesus became my Lord, I realized that I couldn't stop wandering and live according to his word. I was so thankful and moved by that. The best thing after believing in Jesus as Lord was that I still have many problems in my life. But through God's word and prayer, I could always talk to God. I was so thankful for that. So when I go to morning prayer worship, I cry, Lord! Then I pray. Then God pours an amazing peace and joy into me. Then I would get so moved that after morning prayer, I used to look up at the blue sky and shout, Thank you, God! As I ran through the streets, then my wife would come after me and beg me to, Please! Stop doing that! (laughs) After I believed in Jesus as Lord, I got this great passion to share the gospel. So I told my small church members, I won't come home unless I share the gospel with at least one person every day. And I really did that. I thought everyone I shared the gospel with would believe in Jesus. I couldn't understand why they wouldn't because there was such a sure proof. So wouldn't it be stranger to not believe? I shared and shared. One Sunday after worship service, I was so full of the Holy Spirit that I went to a hill behind my house with my kids and I gave the gospel like crazy. (laughs) As I began to teach students at the university, I gave the gospel to students whenever I had the chance. I knew just how much I wondered before I believed in Jesus. So every morning, I prayed for my students. to hear the gospel of the resurrection. Believe this risen Jesus as their Lord and live a truly free and joyful life in this world. One day, a student called me past one in the morning. 
This was a student who was always asking himself, what is life? And couldn't adjust to school life well. I went to him immediately after I received the call. Then I shared the gospel of resurrection to the student and he received Jesus as Lord. Since then, he adjusted to student life. There was also a student whose faith was really shaken because he got involved with the cult in his freshman year. So I gave worship with the student every week and he finally received Jesus as Lord. God used me to save souls because I had the gospel of the resurrection. He used me as a student advisor because I shared the gospel hard and taught classes very passionately as well. I was awarded for excellence in teaching one semester, and I also received a presidential citation after the students nominated me for teaching. Oh. <laughs> Every day, I am experiencing amazing peace that God gives to the one who believes Jesus as Lord. There was a professor I knew who had accomplished a lot in academics in school. Some time ago, I was astonished to hear him say this to me. Dr. Hong, I don't think I've accomplished anything in life. But on the other hand, I was very thankful that I was a witness of the resurrection. I'm in my mid-forties, and I thank God and give Him glory for letting me live on this earth as a missionary for the gospel and an advisor to students so that I can joyfully share the gospel of the resurrection every day. Thank you.